18 years ago, while living in Texas as a young mother of a two-year-old and enjoying a beautiful sunny day at the playground, another child approached us, looked at us, and screamed really loud to her mother, look, mommy, brown people. I was shocked. Not just because this little girl ran away from us, really scared, but because this statement came from just a little child. Allow me to take you on a brief tour that will help me to explain how this personal experience, such as being called brown, helped me to reflect about discrimination and how this changed my perspective about diversity. I was born and raised in Ecuador, South America. And I left when I was 19 years old. Since then, I have lived and worked in very different countries. For you to understand where I'm coming from, let me explain how in Ecuador and in other countries in South America, people see themselves. The norm is that we are a mixture, we are called mestizos. But the norm among upper middle class Ecuadorians is to self-identify as white. As whiteness in this case has not to do anything with race, but with class and socioeconomic status. So while growing up in my small town in Ecuador, I did not realize how privileged I was not to be discriminated because of this assignation as a white mestizo. But this was about to change. When I moved to the United States, I was not anymore a white mestizo. I was brown. I, my experience with discrimination started. But again, this was about to change. After just two years, I moved to Gabon, Africa. And one more time, I was with my small kid, Mateo. He asked me to say his name in this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to blend in to be part of this new society. It was all new. One day we went through the market. It was crowded, it was colorful. It was such a new experience. Suddenly I screamed. I heard kids screaming. They were screaming, the Blanche, the Blanche. I did not speak French very well, but I could understand they were saying the white, the white. I look around. I was trying to see where they were pointing at. Anyway, remember the last time I was brown. They were pointing at us. They were calling us the white. I was really surprised. After several years, I've moved to Malaysia. And my experience in Malaysia has nothing to do with what people were seeing me. Anyway, they were seeing me more or less as white. My experience in Malaysia working for a non-profit organization, working with refugees from different countries around the world, helped me understand that discrimination is not just about color or race. Discrimination can be based on religion, culture, customs, age, gender. I was able to relate to their stories. I was able to feel how it feels to be discriminated. In this case, their migration status as refugees was the base to discriminate them and label them as dangerous. Anyway, they were illegal. They were not supposed to be in this country. Several years have passed since I was called brown or white or brown or white, depending on where I was living or working. In the United States, I was a brown person, and so I was labeled. And this label came attached to a stereotype. This label read illegal immigrant, illiterate, poor, dangerous. In other countries, I was a white person. And this label came with another set of words, completely different. I was an expat, an expert, a rich, I was harmless. I did not enjoy being called brown or white. I just wanted to be seen as myself. I just wanted to be seen as a person, a professional, a woman, a friend, a mother. I just wanted to be seen as a human being. This made me think that something that is really important for me is to live under the golden rule. This idea that you should treat others as you should treat, as you would like to be treated yourself. And this made me think, that it's time for me to empower. What empower me? Empower means to give somebody the strength, to make somebody more confident, to claim their rights and live their life. I want to empower myself. I want to empower myself that doesn't matter my gender, my age, my color. I am foremost a human being with my own strengths, my own weaknesses. Why I'm sharing this story with you is not because I want to judge those who label me. 
or not because I want to point out to several countries that blame me as, or point me as brown. I just wanted to make a point. When I was moving to brown to white to brown to white, I'm thinking about these new racially diverse emojis. But I'm not an emoji, I'm just a human person, a human being, a person who has been assigned different colors depending on where I was, depending on place, history, customs. But a lot, it has to do with education. Let me tell you something about these little kids, these refugee kids. In Malaysia, refugee kids cannot go to a school. So we have to open up a school for refugees. It was not very difficult to teach them mathematics, science, language. One of the most difficult things was to teach these kids not to discriminate. Not to discriminate others, although they were coming from war. Although Syrians were in the same classrooms with Iranians, and they were in war. That was the one of the most difficult things that we have to do. And if we were able to educate these kids, not to discriminate, and just to see each other as human beings, we can also do it here. So why not start today? Why not to start right now to empower ourselves, to promote diversity, and inspire others to act now? I want you to go home and think about the struggles of all the people that in one way or another have been discriminated because of little acts sometimes that we don't understand. I want you to be aware of your actions and your words. Be aware that maybe you can make mistakes, but what do we need to educate ourselves to promote mutual understanding and respect. In preparing for this talk, I read a quote from Angela, uh, Maya Angelou who said, it's time for parents to educate their kids that in diversity there is beauty and strength. So why not start today? Why not to start right now educating in our own houses, in our own homes? To teach and to empower diversity, you don't need to go to college or you don't need to go to university or get a PhD. You just need to empower yourself and inspire others to recognize that in diversity there is beauty and strength. Thank you.